So one of the things that, that certainly educational games are, are, are going to be borrowing from is this idea of situated learning. So situated learning is a, is, a, is a radical idea in one sense, but it's also very common sense on the other side. Um, if we would think of the, the basic example of what situated learning looks like, it looks like mentorship. That would be the thing that we've probably all seen. It looks like an apprentice, uh, let's say working alongside a master carpenter, and learning on site by actually doing carp carpentry, being mentored by another person that's part of the community around carpentry. So situated learning then says that learning is, is not uh, the transfer of ideas from one person to another, but it's an entire package of activity, like things that you're actually doing, the community and the situation that you're actually in while you, you do that activity, as well as kind of the lessons or the concepts. So video games, you can imagine, are just a, an, an amazing media to, to see situated learning make, make its way you know, into, into practice. Because video games, everything is, is activity. Um, there, there is no video game that you know, is, is simply cognitive. Uh, in a video game, you're running and jumping and solving puzzles and exploring and you know, playing with systems and seeing what the cause and effects are. The other side of, of video games as it relates to situated is the idea of the, the environment in which you're doing this work. So in video games, we can, we, can, we can create environments where they're highly social, that we're solving problems together. And you know, certainly MMOs are a good example of this. Or we can create environments that maybe we couldn't even create in, in the real world. So we can have you doing things in space, or uh, we can have you doing things as though you were an atom working within a, you know, a molecule, or you're a, bi a bacteria in soil. So we can put you in environments that you wouldn't normally be able to be in, it's just not even possible. And then certainly the concepts within video games are, are pretty clear. I would say that the way that you have a concept to come across in a video game is the concept that you're, that's being taught is the killer strategy. It's the way that you beat the game. So in a video game, we actually see the concepts being illustrated through you know, action. And when you beat the game, that's when you've mastered the concept. So situated learning theory as it relates to video games is just like a perfect fit. Um, this is a way that we can do situated learning without having to actually build that environment or build that dangerous situation. We can kind of leverage interactive media instead to actually you know, embody situated learning. So a lot of my work, uh, the inspiration uh, comes from the Apple iPhone. When this d mobile device was released, you know, one of the first thoughts a lot of people had is, what, what can we do with this thing? Like, what, what can it be used for? Um, how might this affect everything? And that, that question has been the one that's been driving me. Um, so instead of completely projecting you into kind of your mind's eye, like when you're reading a book, or on the screen when you're playing a video game like Assassin's Creed that has a great narrative, we've been really curious what would happen if we made the, the screen tiny and let the world be the setting. And just a minor narrative you know, impulse that's coming from the screen, for example saying, um, you know, you're a secret agent, that one little sentence can allow the, the person to reinterpret the world around them and we can use the world, uh, the physical world, as the most high resolution rendering that you know, anybody could ever have. So th this has come up in a, in a number of projects where narrative has really been the, the key thing that's enabled um, by mobile and obviously is a big part of how video games work. Uh, another place that I think we naturally will go uh, with, with a, a theory coming out of situated in video games is the idea of place and community education. So video games have the potential to get us thinking about culture and history and communities. Um, often I would say that video games kind of form their own cultures or maybe provide reflection on, on culture. And the question here that's really inspiring to us is to say, what if we actually used a video game that was directly designed to link you into your culture, your place, your neighborhood, your community? Can we design video game interactions that make you look more deeply at the stories around you, at the people around you, and at the kind of contested ideas around you? So as we create a design object that is centered around things like narrative and place and mobile technology, the, the thing that we're exploring here and excited about is what happens when we have youth design their stories, their games, their um, you know, interactive narratives about a place? What if we allow every teacher, every artist, um, every kid to make their own explorations into that? And we give them a platform so they don't have to be a programmer to do so. Um, we allow them to design things that we would have never thought about and then do the lessons that they learn out there. We create new features in this tool and spin it back out so that people can continue designing. So we're actually exploring new areas through design. It's like rapidly communally prototyping.